this week. You can take maybe 200,000 and invest it with Jim's company, which is Mavis company. And then uh, that's where you get the returns. I am a return so I am to a bigger 10% uh, every month. Too good to be true. More than a year on, investors into Jim's housing scheme still await their returns. This is Checkpoint, and I'm in Gepile Mabuse. Pyramid and Ponzi schemes have been around for years. They offer unrealistic, get-rich-quick options and often crash sooner rather than later. Last year saw the collapse of Mavrodi's Bitcoin-based Triple M. And as producer Sebi Butelezi and cameraman Sabud Lamini found out, there's already a new kid on the block. In February last year, South Africa's second largest steel producer, Evra's Heifold Steel in Emalachen in Pumalanga, closed its doors. The mall was operating at a loss and could no longer compete with cheap steel imports from China. It shut shop and sacked 1,700 workers. Almost overnight, this community of Emalacheni had hundreds of unemployed people with hefty retrenchment packages. It was around this time that Kingdom Worship Church pastor and concerned community leader Robbie Williams ran into what he thought was a good Samaritan. Mavis Baloyi told Robbie that she had an investment vehicle like no other and that her company, Jim's Housing and Holdings, would provide much needed relief to those who had suddenly found themselves jobless but had healthy amounts to invest. Uh, where he said you can invest money, you can take maybe 200,000 and invest it with Jim's company, which is Mavis' company. And then uh, that's where you get the returns. He says Mavis promised a 10% monthly return. So an investment of 200,000 rand could yield more than double that in a year. The community of Emalacheni is highly dependent on the mines for employment. And from what Robbie had heard from Mavis, Jims would be a game changer for his community. Robbie agreed to start recruiting retrenched mine workers for Mavis. I suggested to her, can she come and do a presentation in Wheatbank, where I can call all the people to come and hear, and hear direct from her. So that's what we did. Uh, it was early last year, if I'm not mistaken. And then she came and she did the presentation at Proti Hotel. At the meeting, enticing videos like this one were played. With a one-year fixed-term investment account, you get 35% interest every three months. In the audience salivating was Henry Mgomezulu, a father of four who had recently received a 400,000 rand retrenchment package from the local mine. He was immediately taken. After a presentation, I uh, 100,000. And then 200,000 I'm following, I'm transfer from my own account to the account of uh, a uh, company that achieves housing. And then the uh, same process, I'm going to another 300,000. I'm going to pay 10% every month. So I'm going to pay 10% every month. So I'm going to pay 10% every month. So I'm going to pay 10% every month. We all want her housing figure even more because we are going to amount to total level ten percent, and we are going to level money. Actually, we are pelela, we are we are to be able. The timing was perfect for Henry. Unemployed at the time, he had been desperately searching for a secure investment to grow his retrenchment monies and secure his children's future. He says Jim's came at a time. Where he was still weighing up his options. Now already, uh, I contact one of the companies in Johannesburg. Ends a franchising, when a franchise begins with Tata, because he almost concluded, concluding the young kid into, 
regarding a, a, a start of your business. So but 40,000 rand in monthly returns sounded way better than all the other opportunities so he had probed. As the saying goes, if it's too good to be true, it often is. So Bongengosi Kumalo, also a former employee of Highfelt Steel, decided to do his homework on germs before parting with his cash. Bongingosi ignored these red flags. Mavis was persuasive and always available to respond to queries, he says. In April last year, two months into his retrenchment, Kumalo eventually parted with 200,000 rand. He says Mavis kept in touch and was the quintessential professional. Why were four now on Landelela? What he maliba in short? Moba no mangena, why wafuna ama beneficiary wafuna it if kids abantuana so a young as an abuana muta with tea in the right is serious. Robbie, who had recruited three people, suspected nothing either. Personally, you know, for me as a pastor, when Mavis also insisted she's a child of God, opening with prayer and everything was done with prayer, I was easily taken and I believed everything she was saying. So I was at ease, especially because I also went to, to her house. I went to the offices, so I couldn't ask more. Bonginkosi says Mavis went the extra mile to prove to investors that hers was not a scam or a pyramid scheme. <laughs> The truth of the matter is that Scam Advisor was unable to determine Jims's status. The website simply says Jims's URL does not seem valid. Investors took this to mean Jim's was clean. Robbie says he too was shown the scam advisor search. I asked maybe see if the product, product, the product is legit. Then she said, okay, she has a scam product, product that she has, which we can look into, which we did and we thought it was legit enough. Satisfied that there was nothing to be concerned about, in April last year, Robbie traveled from Woodbank to Pretoria to undergo a training course meant to enable him to officially work as a recruiter for germs. This also guaranteed him a 7% commission on each investment made. There he discovered that germs had many more products on offer, all presented as opportunities for people to grow the money they had in order to purchase assets such as cars and houses. The training was about two hours, but mostly was explaining property, how it works, especially that company which we visited in Pretoria. Just forgot the name, they were in, uh, explaining to us their product, how it works, how they fund people. They said they had investors from overseas who are interested in helping South Africans with property since somehow they know there's a, a property uh, shortage or problem. Even the cars, how they can help you, even how they can help you if you're on credit bureau. So it was a, a, a bit of a number of, pro, of products that they had. That's why the pr presentation took a little bit longer. In the meantime, things were moving very slowly for investors, Bonginkosi and Henry. every month. End of April, end of May, Mark Fanny Life Fagi, 
eh, satisilindi ili ngoba mtlamba ma payments saazu kuti arana from mtlaka um, 1 fia mtlaka um, 7. So mvoga logo ila hapo ngabo na kongutan ama nga saifa. In July last year, the first excuses from Mavis started surfacing. That's why I was sent an email. I could not have a good time, but I was able to get an email. I was able to get an email from the company. I was able to get an email. I was able to get an email from the company. I was able to get an email from the company. I was able to get an email. Mavis sent the very same email to Henry. It purported to be a letter from FNB instructing Mavis to give her clients a check account dispute form. She then sent Henry this picture of a headline that appeared in the Saturday Star. Mabona atumela email in an article evela wo Saturday Star. It guys to to see this. So Guys, did you see this? And then now, people are going in. We shooting a bona lapo. But now, from the article, we told the article, it came about he hacking. And then now, saying a bona lapo, we did lapo. Finally, we did not be one king. Investors were told that their monies had somehow disappeared. It was the very first time they were informed about the FNB connection. They were given this form to fill out which FNB cardholders complete when trying to retrieve funds that have mysteriously been withdrawn from the accounts. FNB confirmed that Jim's banks with them, but say they have never issued Mavis these forms to distribute to investors. Immediately after the FNB forms were sent to investors, Mavis disappeared. Unlike before, she could no longer be reached. This is when it dawned on Henry that he may have become victim to a scam. Henry alerted the others. Robbie the recruiter says he was left in utter disbelief. He says along with the awful truth emerged a changed Mavis. That's where uh, she became nasty. You know, the Christian in her was out now with the way she was answering. Recruiters like Robbie desperately needed answers from Mavis to pass on to investors. She would give us feedback as if we are interrogating her and the clients or whoever is invested are fine with her, you know, trying to give us that impression that people are not fighting. They understand that they had a glitch with the company since she claimed the bank account of their company was hacked. That's why she lost some of the money. That's why she couldn't pay on time. To date, Bongengosi is still struggling to reach the once accessible Mavis. This Daily Sun article, published in October 2016, caused even more panic among investors. A young lady from Bushbuck Ridge had told the newspaper that Mavis had scammed her. In the paper's online comments section, another victim came forward, alleging that Mavis has stolen from her and her husband as well, using the same scam. She said her husband invested 300,000 of his pension and that she invested 65,000 rand. On the internet, Checkpoint came across even more complaints about gyms. This one is from Martha Sambo, who lodged a complaint with the National Consumer Commission. Bongigosi is riddled with guilt and regret. The money he thought would sustain his family is now gone. After the break, investors are still hoping Mavis Baloi will resurface to pay them back. Every month so finally
Having already given up hope of ever seeing his money again, Bonginko Sikumalo found a job at a mine in Kalenen. Broke and totally broken, he left his home in Whitbank to live in this back room in the township of Rufilwe. He had already accepted that he may never see his money again when Mavis Baloy sprung a surprise in August. And not just that one time. The last deposit was made in December last year. It has been quiet since then. Back in Emalacheni, Henry is struggling to find another job. He stands to lose much more than the 400,000 he invested with gems. Every month According to their website, Jims offers home loan services, refinancing of existing loans, investments, trading, as well as construction. However, Jabili Mbele, the head of registration at the Financial Services Board, says Jim's housing is not on their database for any of these services. I'm not aware of that entity and on our records we don't have it and it has never been registered with us, nor has it has submitted lodge an application form. The FSB informed the police and sent out a public alert, but Mavis has never been arrested. Robbie the recruiter says he never received the commission he was promised by Mavis. No, I do feel responsible. I even decided uh, if I could take a responsibility to go and look for her and, and see how we get the money. But unfortunately, Henry went through the legal path and they advised us not to do that. Craig Gradich, an investment planner, says the interest that Mavis was offering was totally unrealistic. Over the last 100 and 20 years, the best return you've ever gotten from, or that you've gotten from any one of the asset classes has been about 13.5% per annum. So if somebody is now offering you 10% per month, you know, you're looking at, without compounding, 127, 120% per annum. He says there's one simple rule when it comes to investment. And it's normally a rule that if you don't understand how companies are making their money, don't invest there. Not the most comforting words for Henry. Holding a summons in his hand, he is certain he will soon be evicted. If I'm moving out of this house, I will move out to Mavis' house. That's what I will do. And I will, will occupy it like a, 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 because there's no way we, we, we can go. Where must we go? So, Robbie says he has learned his lesson. If a person comes in the name of the Lord, it doesn't necessarily mean they're honest. We still have to dig deep and try to inves investigate everything, especially if you are going to include other people's money in the project. I've worked so many years upon in seven zela in Ganizam, which in Nazo Ziberat, Mobang, Kurukurum Pezon, which in Bakulise by Escort in Jarunja. So we are figure much upon. So many years in seven zen, we are figure, Monatia Pega, how long it took me, I want to deposit the money into that account. Just less than a minute, it was already there. She took my money upon. In less than a minute, laying seven zela for many years. Coming up, who's living it up at Jim's Housing and Holdings?
checkpoint first reached out to Jim's housing on the 22nd of February. We went undercover as potential investors. We spoke to a consultant who only identified himself as Fuman, who we have since discovered is Mavis's nephew. We requested to attend one of their presentations. Where are you based? I'm based in Johannesburg. Johannesburg, where in Johannesburg? In Randburg. Randburg. Yeah. Um, okay, let me just take down your contact details, ne? Okay. And then if we can't be able to come to you and present, it means I will call you from the office and run the presentation to you. We insisted on getting a presentation from Mavis and spent the next week trying to secure the meeting. After much ducking and diving, Fumani finally agreed to organize a meeting with Mavis for the 28th of February. When we arrived at the gym's offices in Midrand, we were told Fumani was on his way, without Mavis. All right. So you say you want to invest? Yes. On the long term? Yes, the long term one. Because the long term is three years, right? Three years, three months. Yeah. And then you get the monthly of the month of the month of the month. Mm-hmm. And then each and every year, annually, you get 80% of what you have invested. But you don't have access to it. Okay, what does that mean? That means if you have invested 100K, after 12 months it will be 180K. That means you will be gaining 10% of 180K. He then tried to persuade us to open a forex trading account with Jim's. When we asked to speak to Mavis directly, we were told that would be difficult. This is a very hard person to find because she's trading everything online. So more especially you won't find it. We insisted on getting an appointment with Mavis. We were reassured that it would happen two days later. The next day, however, we received this WhatsApp message from Fumani. It said, Unfortunately, she's not available and she can only be able to communicate with you via email. In the days that followed, we kept being told she would be available the following week, but each appointment was postponed. We then asked to speak to Mavis's deputy. We were referred to a Johan Yube. He was very vague in his explanation of the investment. So uh, we don't handle the money ourselves. Uh, it goes to James Housing then, uh, which Mavis is now. We do have some outside uh, partners in the business invested in various portfolios. It's like someone on the unit trust, I and mean, we don't know exactly where's what there is what going with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we receive the money on a, on a monthly basis, which then Jim's housing received, and from Jim's housing, the money will go then direct to you, or whoever is the name of the investment. So it is, it is various investments. He told us that Mavis multiplies the money through land development, but when we asked which land Jooms had recently developed, Yube struggled to answer. What is that place, uh, Western Area? Okay. Where about Western Area? It is uh, just as you enter the towns. The name of the location? Not so much into the, into the housing thing. Since the Financial Services Board had no knowledge of Jim's housing, we asked Johan who they are regulated by. But the Reserve Bank says it does not regulate any companies. While Henry and many others drown in debt and in sorrow over the money they've lost, Mavis is driving around in this Porsche as well as a Range Rover. Her son, Dendani Baloi, who is also a consultant at Jim's, lives in Westbrook Estates and drives this BMW. Throughout our conversations with Johan, we were told the meeting between us and Mavis would happen. But the day before we were to meet her, this is what Johan told us over the phone. Mavis, uh, 
I think she rather thinking here that you must invest your money somewhere else. Correct. There you have. She said that she thinks she must you must invest your money somewhere else. There you will be more satisfied with. The police in Kiani are aware of Mavis's dealings. They say they are still investigating. But it seems she has gone to ground. A reliable source gave Checkpoint three different addresses believed to be linked to Mavis. The first led us to a family in Sebokeng who said they did not know Mavis. At a complex in Midrand, where she once hosted Pastor Robbie, we were told she had recently moved out. We then visited another home in Cosmo City, and there too, the family knew nothing about Mavis and confirmed they had been living there for years. Days before this broadcast, we asked Johan for an on-camera interview regarding what we had documented undercover. He refused, saying we need to speak to Mavis and that he would arrange the interview. He has since stopped taking our calls. Mavis, if you're out there, Checkpoint would like to hear your side of the story. That's all from us this week. Please do give us your feedback. Our Twitter handle is at Checkpoint underscore ENCA and our email address at checkpoint at ENCA.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Ingebile Mabuse.